Works here to play. Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com with Owen. And this is another Space Marine discussion video for Space Marine Week. Space Marines! I don't know why I said it like that. Just felt like it. And today we are going to be talking about this the best model Games Workshop has ever created. I which, like them. Which is a century. <laughs> You've instantly been hated by three quarters of our viewers, I think. I don't know. I'm just, just, just guessing. I'm already hated by three quarters of our viewers. <laughs> That's okay, that's okay. We're going to be talking about the Centurions. We're going to talk about what we think about the models, briefly, because that's a boring discussion, because everybody's already kind of hashed And we don't know anything about models. Yeah, I'm He not, doesn't sculpt, and I don't paint, and he doesn't paint. Like, none of us know what we're doing. I just, I like stuff that just gets fun to play with on the battle. I do like the way models look, though. That is important to me. We'll talk about the way they look, <laughs> and we'll talk about the way they work, and yep. some theories we have, because we haven't actually played with them on the battlefield. Nor have we proxied. They're still in this box. Yeah, yep. they are still here. <laughs> the three that we have are still right here. Eventually, we will be putting these into the mini wargaming chapter because the mini wargaming chapter has everything. So centurions will be definitely a part of that. Yep. So first off, the models. You said you like them. I do. Obviously, you've heard everybody talk about them. So why do you like them when everybody else doesn't? Well, I don't make my opinion based on what everyone else likes. Why not? But that's like isn't I, that how you're supposed yeah. to like lead your life? You want to be cool, don't you? Yeah. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> No, um, they're like right out of aliens, and they, they they have the little drill that the Forge World models have the Forge World um, driller thing. I I don't know. They're I wouldn't pose them the way they have them all posed, where they're just standing like stock. I would have them up in like action poses. I'm gonna I'm gonna see. I bet you there's gonna be conversions with them crushing guys and just like squeezing enemy models and like don't don't make them just standing there in an open field. Like have them actually doing something. Because the big problem is that they do just look like a piece of metal with no ability to bend their arms. But I have to say, when I saw the leaked pictures of them, I wasn't very impressed. And it's because they were all from the front. And they were leaked pictures, so they weren't scanned very well, or yeah. however they, they got on there. And I looked at that and I thought, nah, I don't know about that. And then, then people started saying that they were actually space marines inside a space marine. Like, they actually guys suited up in their power armor and getting inside this bigger power armor. Which doesn't and, make any sense. And then sense. I'm like, wait a second. What? Why? Doesn't make any sense yeah. at all. <laughs> Why don't you just take off your power armor and put this one on, like Terminator armor kind of thing? Yep. Because it's not like you're stuck in your space in your power armor all the time. And they take them off all the time. They talk about it in all their books. They don't wear it. Yeah, you can't wear that around. Like, think about how annoying that would be. In a Starcraft. Place. They wear it all the time. No, only the one guy. Oh, really? Because he's actually stuck in his. I was under the impression that they were all trapped in them. No, look at Jim Rayner. He's in and out of his all the time. Yeah, that happened. He was. I, I believe you. You didn't play StarCraft 2? I did, but well, all I totally cuts, don't pay attention. Every cutscene, he was not in his power <laughs> yep. armor, except for like the cutscene where he jumped into it. I wrote him off as special character gets special rule. <laughs> well, the Ability to take off armor. <laughs> no, Tychus, and I hope this will be a spoiler for you, Tychus in StarCraft 2, the, the blue space yeah, yeah. guy. I did play it. He was, he was welded into it, and there was even a self-destruct thing put into his that he had to follow his mission, otherwise the, the guy behind the curtains... A bad guy will get you. And, uh, ...would actually kill him. So, But you know, you know what? Actually, I can't say that with certainty that that's the way it is. It seemed to me in the first one that it was implied that they don't get out of it. Right, until they finish their service. They're all little slave soldiers, and they sit in the trenches, and they don't leave them. That, yeah. was, that was how I wrote it off. Anyways, that's a big yeah. sidetrack. <laughs> not, not much to do about this. Yeah. So my impression of them is, wasn't impressed with the idea behind them, wasn't impressed with the cons or the, the leaked pictures, but once I saw these, I, I still have to see them in person, but once I saw the other pictures, I thought, you know what, they're not as bad as they look. I am disappointed that they do turn out to be Space Marines in power armor, climbing inside of other armor. That doesn't make any sense to me, unless, I don't know. Nope. I, <laughs> nope. I, I don't get that. <laughs> just get into Dreadnought. Why, why would you even well, bother? Well, Dreadnoughts you don't want to get into because then you're like cramped well, in there. Well, just make a stuff. Dreadnought that doesn't do that. <laughs> you can make armor that you can climb into. Let's just escalate this a little bit and just make it so that it's a Dreadnought. Yeah. So model-wise, not super impressed. I've seen worse from Games Workshop. I've seen even worse from a lot of other companies. Yep. Uh, but just like how I got used to my Tyranid models, I don't actually like the way Tyranids look. I know, it's kind of weird because I love them so much. I like the old Tyranids. Oh, those are I like the worse. screamer kind of effects. No, yeah. those are awful. <laughs> awful. <laughs> yep. No, I, I don't like the way that they... Don't much care for the they're old like, They're actually now. holding their guns. It's like, mm. no, they, they should have like something... That they have to spit venom, like like hydralisks. I, I like the way StarCraft did the Zerg, and I know... I know We're back to StarCraft campers. again. <laughs> I, I love StarCraft. StarCraft's great. Star, yep. StarCraft Zerg 
is what made me finally convert to Warhammer 40k because I'm like, okay, I'll play the Tyranids, even if they look kind of dumb and Carnifexes look really stupid and Hive Tyrants do too. But I'm used to them now. So I think that'll be the same thing with this. Yep. So model, how the model looks aside, Games Workshop has proven that if you give something good enough rules, people will play it no matter how much they care about the model, such as the, uh, the Dread Knights. Yep, Dread Knights. Those are awful. Nobody likes the baby carrier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The little guy and a bigger guy. Yeah, anyway. Um, and, but I see those all the time because they're, they're awesome. Uh, so Centurions, where would you rank, rank them on the scale of awesome? I'm not giving you a number. Oh, no number here. <laughs> Here's a, there's a scale that I have kind of internally in my head, which is the awesomeness um, competitiveness scale. You have basically like super competitive, like it's in a competitive list, almost a must bring. Like the Doom. Yeah, exactly. Like Doom's the Doom right Malachi, up at the top of that list. He's right at the top because his points are right. He always makes back his points, and he always does more damage, and he always does well. And he's just kind of like, it's just a no-brainer. And then you have the very bottom of the list where it's like... Ripper swarms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they basically, if you want to win, you don't bring them. Yeah. But, if, if, but you might bring them anyways just because you want to have fun. fun or the scenarios yeah. or whatever. And then you have those in-between ones. And you get that with armies as well. Like you'll have armies that are super powerful and the ones that are really bad and then the ones who can do well if played well. Where would you rank the Centurions and all that? They're, they're competing with Terminators and Devastators. They are basically the Devastator Terminator is the way I see it. Like, there's the Assault version, but the Assault Terminators are basically as good as them, if not better, because you get more dudes. So it comes down to them completing for the shooty slot. So, I don't know. They're not bad. I'm going to have to see them. Like, they look good on paper, but a lot of stuff looks good on paper and doesn't turn out to be at useful. They end up... Or the opposite. Or the opposite, It looks bad yeah. on paper. And, and then there's some combo good. you didn't think of, and they end up being great, but... Yeah. Yeah, like loading them up into a land raider. First impression, I think they are going to replace Devastators in a lot of armies. I think that's what it's going to be. I can't see how they wouldn't. Just because yeah. they, the Devastators are kind of hard to play with because they don't have Relentless. Whereas yeah. the Centurions do. Unless you play Ultramarines. Then they do. One of their, their chapter tactic. You can make your Devastators Relentless for a turn. Oh, for one turn. I'm talking about like for the five to seven turns that you play Rarely ever you move. You move like turn one and get in position, and then your 48-inch rockets just kind of wait. That's if, you, that's if you put terrain sparsely on the board. The way I like to play is I like to actually put the amount of terrain that's meant for the game, which is going to block line of sight, which is going to cause you to be shooting through area terrain and giving people cover saves left, right, and center. When you're firing those single-shot last cannons, you don't want to be given cover saves. Yeah, and so, that's true. So really, if you're playing it with the right amount of terrain, and not just sparse terrain like a lot of people actually do, you're, that's going to completely change the way you play the game. Yeah, so keep that in mind. Terrain. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah we, We're fortunate it's enough to be pain. playing in a studio. So you have to remember that too. When you're looking at a, a unit, you can't look at it in a vacuum and say, well, if we just compare it numbers for numbers, this one's better than that one. It's like, no, you've got to think about the situations. It's a toughness five. That's do you, really do you play up. just against Tyranids? Like maybe you just have one friend you play against, and he's, yeah. just, he's a Tyranid player. Well, that's going to change what's good. Do you usually play with lots of terrain, a little terrain? Um, how do you, like, what do you normally do? So that'll change it. I think overall, actually, the Centurions seem to be very useful. For me, the big comparison is the Centurions versus the Terminators. Maybe partly because they're like beside each other on the page. Could be. But because they're also similar it's points. On that cost. page, maybe. Yes. I'm well, looking at the Devastator ones. I'm looking at the Elite <laughs> slot right here. Yeah. Because when I see these side by side, I see for the spread of the same amount of points, you get three Centurions as opposed to five Terminators. Now, it might seem like a big difference, but the Centurions have twice the wounds. They have one extra toughness and strength. Yeah. And uh, sure, they lose the five plus invulnerable save, but... They lose a whole bunch of attacks, too. Well, I'm not too worried about the close combat part against units, because they're armed with siege drills. Oh, that's true. Which yeah. are meant to be destroying vehicles. So, if yeah, if you're, if you're looking to shred a bunch of units of guys... I always found with Assault Terminators that you threw them against the enemy Assault unit. Yeah. Because they won. They yeah. won every time. Oh, well, because they had the better save. They, they were fast. The damage. They had lots of attacks. They rerolled to wound. You would throw a chaplain in there. So they're rerolling to hit, rerolling to wound. They've got three attacks each on the charge. And then four attacks because they've got lightning claws. And they're rerolling to hit, reroll to wound. And they just kill everything. And, and you stick them in a land raider, run them up, and yep. boom. You just have a kill squad right there. I don't, yes. think, I don't think Centurions are going to be used that way. No, they can't do it. No, they, they don't, don't have, have the right... They only have one attack. Two with the two. They have two siege drones. Yeah, that's true. I guess Which is extra. not really an argument. It's just that they do have that option. Yeah, they do have that extra that extra one. Yeah. But the, the siege drills are, are their anti-vehicle. That's really yeah. what they're made for. Like, sure, they'll pound the crap out of a single unit or a single model, but... And they are at initiative strength nine weapons, which is not a bad thing either. Yeah. 
because they're not unwieldy. They're just specialist. Yeah, exactly. And you have two of them, so you get the extra attack anyway. Yeah. So they, they have that going for them, but but no, I don't I don't think you're going to bring these guys as assault. I really stick by that they are the heavy support. I do think that the heavy support, they, they would replace Devastators for the most part as well because they have their Decimator pro protocols, which allows them to fire two weapons. It's just like the, the what's that one Tau battlesuit group Every there? Every Tau guy has it. Every Tau battlesuit has? It's uh, the multi-tracker. Multi-tracker, that's right. Yeah. They can, if you upgrade them to the multi-tracker. They come with it stock now. Oh, yeah? They made them cheaper and you get it for free. All the battlesuits, you mean? Yeah. Cool. So now the, the question is, des no, that they can't do Overwatch, so it doesn't matter. Because they don't have slow, they have slow and purposeful. Yeah. So, so slow and purposeful them, gives them relentless. Yeah. But they lose Overwatch and they lose the run, which you would sometime use, I guess. Grab an objective. Big they, guns never tire. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't think of a reason why you would run. I see the slow and purposeful would be more advantage than a disadvantage. The big disadvantage yeah, exactly, being exactly. the loss of Overwatch. But if you're if they're being charged, they're most likely not in a good position anyways. Yep. Because especially with the Centurion Devastator squad, they're meant to be in the back. They're going to be armed with the long-range weaponry. They might... Grab cannon. I love the slow and purposeful to allow them to move around. move around and get better, draw a better line of sight on models and stuff. But that doesn't mean they're going to be moving up. It yep. just means that they can kind of skirt around borders and get better shots. Yep. So even looking at... Uh, when, I start, when I looked at this, the, the stats of the squads, I see them as... Definitely having a lot of potential. Uh, definitely situational, but in a lot of situations. Like there's obviously just just like devastators. I've seen devastator squads do nothing. I've seen them do a lot. Uh, it all depends on what the opponent brings and how the scenario plays out. So, the loss of an invuln is kind of a hit too, versus yeah, terminators. But if you're playing with the right amount of terrain on the board, it's a lot easier to get rid of a cover save than it is to get rid of invulns. It is. It is. But you can still, for the most part, have some way there. And once again, if you're if you're they're getting shot at, you know, nice high toughness. You're going to be having to focus. Fire yeah, the on toughness them. five is a big thing. Yeah, because they they have two wounds, so they're not going to be getting instant killed by last cannons. No, which is the big thing that kills terminators is last cannons because they get that five up and then they die. And these guys, they'll take a wound and then you shuffle positions and put that one guy further back and then yeah. the next guy takes a wound and then you rotate again and just keep doing that until everyone dies. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, all this is theory, of course. We haven't played with the Centurions yet, and uh, that's what it really comes down to with these: is new niches are found as people play test them and, st and start playing with them. So, here's a question for you, as a viewer: Have you played with or against the Centurions, whether the Assault or Devastator Squad? And if so, what were they like? What situations did you find they were good? What situations did you find that they sucked? And how do you think they can be used effectively in an army? We'd love to hear your comments in the comments below, of course. And mm, in the next I video... Thought. Oh, you want to I do have a thought. You want to actually I wanna, answer I want to answer that. Oh, okay. I think you should bring Imperial Fist ones, right there, in a Land Raider, five of them. And they're very bulky. They're, yeah, you can only, and it has to be a Crusader Land Raider. Yeah, otherwise you can't fit them all. Which is even better, because your Imperial Fists, so your Bolters are all re-rolling, and Hurricane Bolters are Bolters. And you have five of these guys that a hurricane bolter is basically three bolt guns combined. So five of these guys walk out and they just brap and kill. No, hurricane bolters aren't on the list. Oh, they're not. Bolt listed? pistols, bolt guns, storm bolters, heavy bolters, or combi weapons that are firing as bolt guns. But Her they're not listed as what's not applying to. No, no, no. It's just saying what it does apply to. Why would it list what the, it does? The two hit rolls of one major oh, bolt. Never but, mind. but there's special ammunition in some of those ah, that can yeah, be fired. Yeah. All right, I take it back. But still, still. <laughs> it still, might work. The rest would still work, just because they don't get the reroll the ones. Oh, you can bring them as uh, regular ultramarines. There you and go. And then use the... Then just use the tactic. The feet. <laughs> the, the mini feet. Yeah. 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 All right, well, well, other than that, yeah, leave your comments. Try something else. I can't think of anything else at the moment, but I'm sure there's something else you can I do. There's plenty of ways to use the units. Yeah. There's uh, always Especially more. with all the different upgrades, all the different weapons that they can get access to. That's really going to... Yep. Those change. cannons. Uh, rockets. Ooh, that's actually not bad. They can replace the heavy bolter. Oh, no, hurricane bolter with a missile launcher. So they could be standing there with missile and laz and shooting both, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, strength 8, strength 9. Yep. Both low AP. Pretty yep. good. Right. In our next video, we are going to be talking about the new tank, the stalker slash hunter. Right? Right? Yep. Yes. The stalker tank, which is also the hunter tank. Well, not Same really. kit. Same kit. Yep. Yeah. The two tanks that came out. And uh, so, yeah. Stay tuned for that. This is Matthew from Mini Wargaming with Owen.
He's also from Any Wargaming. I am. Happy Wargaming.